Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So today I'm going to show you how Nintendo DS performance works on the uh, Retroid Pocket 2. Now there's a couple considerations to think about when you're playing this in terms of controls, because you can imagine there's two screens in the DS, so having to implement that on a single screen is a little bit tricky. And then on top of that, some of the graphics as well, there's uh, different issues you can come up with. So I want to walk you through just some of my experiences in playing with this new app and figuring out how I'm getting the best DS performance. So I hope you enjoy it, but let's jump right into it. So first, you need the Drastic app, which you can get on the uh, Google Play Store, and it's $5, but I think it's well worth it. So in here, you pull up a game, and one nice thing is it has save states, so you can jump right into a game uh, from your last save state as opposed to getting to the menu screen and then toggling it over. But you can see here I'm flipping between the top and bottom screen. Let me show you how to do that. You can go and you can hit that button in the menu, which will show both screens at once, and then you can toggle that on and off as you want to on that bottom left there. But another thing you can do is you can actually go into the settings and just change it all together so it happens every time. You go into the settings menu, select your screen layout, and then pick one. And then I'm doing landscape full screen. So that's including the entire screen. And then I'm using a toggle button, my R2 button, uh, which I've set up under the key mapping under special keys to allow me to swap between the two. So here I am with Animal Crossing. It works just fine. Uh, I don't really actually need that second screen, but I can always toggle over to it if I need it. So let me show you Super Mario 64. Now I was kind of excited about this one. This is a DS game that's pretty good. I, I hate the way Yoshi controls in the game, but overall it looks pretty good and it feels pretty good. So a good example on this one is that there are two different types of 3D rendering you can do. And this is the original rendering here. This is how it looks on an actual Nintendo DS. Kind of low resolution, you know, you can see the castle is kind of just jaggedy looking and whatnot. But you can go into the menu and you can change it to have upgraded 3D graphics. So you go into the menu, uh, you go down, scroll down to options. And then you do the first one, video, here under options. And then here, uh, we're going to play around a lot with this, but there's the high resolution 3D rendering. So you turn that one on and let's go back to the game and you'll just see the huge differences has in the graphics. So look at that. So the castle is clear now. You can see there's not that fuzziness in the background. The sprites look sharp. Yoshi looks great. Uh, now there tends to be some slowdown with certain games. So we'll walk through uh, which games work best with this and which don't. Uh, but for now, you know, Mario 64 in general works well. It's, it's funny because Yoshi plays so slowly as, as he's walking before he kind of gets momentum that it feels like there's slowdown in the game but if you actually look at the frames uh, per second and whatnot it's actually just fine so here's a, the first level and you can see the resolution's fine the gameplay is great uh, it's just a matter of you know whether or not you want to play with Yoshi but I don't know he can eat characters and spit them out it's kind of cool so a little little thing that Mario cannot do uh, but let me show you other games and how they work with the same resolution. So one of my favorite DS games of all time is new Super Mario Brothers. And this one runs like a dream. Like it kind of gives me a little bit of joy every time I turn this on because I'm getting 100% frame uh, resolution and, and, and no frame skipping, any of that stuff's on. It just works so well, but I'm using all those high resolution graphics too. And so it's so fun to play. It looks so good, so much better than it did on the DS. And it's just kind of a, a it's the best platform where I found to play on this system itself. Now, one thing I don't like is that, you know, this touch screen that you have to push in order to get your additional item, you have to go into mouse mode and then tab over to get to the other screen and then push it and then get out of mouse mode. In order. So it's like you lose like 10 seconds just kind of setting all that up. But let me show you now that you're kind of, your eyes are fixated on that 3D rendering, the high resolution one, let's try it without and see how bad it looks. So look at that, like this is what it originally looked like. And this is honestly what we should expect out of it because this is what the DS looked at. But I'm just so happy and proud that we're able to play it at a much higher resolution and it works really great. So let's try the same trick on Mario Kart DS. So another, you know, favorite game of mine and uh, I'll pull it up with the regular regular resolution first. So you can see here, it's just got that fuzzy kind of look to it. And honestly, this is how it always looked. Um, but it's it's hard, you know, on such a nice display to play it like this. It just is a little bit wonky, you know, the, the sprites don't look great. So here it is with the upgraded sprites. And uh, the rendering looks much better. There's a little bit of slowdown though. I'll tell you, it's not as super silky smooth as it is when it's on a low resolution. So uh, you can actually go in and turn frame skip on. So this is playing with one frame skip and you can see it's running nice and smooth. The, the tire movement is a little bit weird looking. I don't know if that's a, uh, an artifact of the 
uh, high resolution or if it's the frame skip, but I'm happy to ignore that just with how nice it looks. So let's talk about controls. So Metroid Prime Hunters is a good example to talk about. So this game actually can play with dual analog sticks and it's not perfect, um, but let me show you how to set that up initially. So you go into the settings, you go and you select external controller and then the right stick mode, you change that to FPS mode. And basically what that mimics is that it mimics the pushing of the touch screen with your right analog stick. It's not super smooth. It's not like buttery smooth or anything like that, but it is definitely functional. I've had a couple like glitches where it'll go further than I meant to or things like that. And honestly, the right digital nub thing on the, the Retroid Pocket 2 is not the best either. Um, but yeah, it, it works. And you can see here, this is without the high resolution 3D scaling. It, it doesn't look great, you know, uh, but I like to test between the two to see if there's any difference in gameplay performance. And honestly, with the high resolution graphics, it's very, very minimal. There's a little bit of stuttering every once in a while with the high resolution graphics. Uh, and you could probably change that if you updated the frame skip to one. But as it stands, just playing it out of the box like this, it's, it's fine. Like I, I found that this is probably one of the better FPSs as far as the graphics and controls. So one of the things I don't like is that you have to go into mouse mode and go to the touch screen if you want to change into a ball or you want to change to missiles or your scan visor. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. You have to basically pause and in the heat of a moment, it's not going to be very easy during a battle to swap between all those things. Uh, but other than that, everything works really well with this game. Now, one other first person shooter that doesn't work so well is the Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare game. Now, this one does not play with the high resolution graphics. It's super slow, even with frame skip, it looks terrible. And so uh, this one, I, I just prefer to leave it on the low resolution. And even then the controls, even though it's the same scheme where it's like using that touch screen, it's still just wonky. So I don't recommend that one. The LEGO games work pretty well, but they also require that low resolution. They, they get really slow on the high resolution. At least this Batman 2 one did. I'm not sure about maybe some of the older ones, like the Star Wars LEGO ones. They might work okay, or maybe Harry Potter. Uh, but as it stands, this one uh, needed the low resolution. And then another one that required low resolution was the Beautiful Joe game. And this one, if you try to actually turn on the high resolution or you try to uh, turn on frame skip, it actually uh, makes the screen flash and it's just completely unplayable. So for this one, you just have to have low resolution, but it's a little bit charming for this game in particular. And then finally, another low res game that's required is the Kingdom Hearts game here. And um, I'm not super familiar with this franchise. You know, I've always tried to play these games and they're just so confusing. I don't know who's what or anything, but this one works well. It just requires that low uh, resolution. Um, the high, high resolution works during cutscenes. Some games that work really well uh, on high resolution are the Castlevania games, and then that's because you know they're 2D games, and so it's not as much rendering that's required, uh, and you really don't see any difference between having that high resolution on or off with this one in particular. But it works well, and uh, controls are nice. There are a few like touchscreen requirements for this, but it's very minimal for all the Castlevania games, which make these really ideal to play on the Retroid Pocket too. Okay, so let's get into some puzzle games. I think these really play well on the Retroid Pocket 2. And you know, Tetris DS, I love this game. I think it's probably one of the best Tetris versions that you have available. But one of the things I used to love about it was playing Wi-Fi on it. And I, I just had a suspicion that it wasn't gonna work, but I wanted to try it out anyway. And so I went into the Wi-Fi settings on the DS and tried to come up with an access point, you know, just to even recognize my router and nothing comes up. And so I thought, oh, it must be an emulation issue with the emulator itself. So I went into the settings in the emulator and saw, you know, whether or not there's anything I could do about it. And it's actually there. You can look it up and it'll say under options, um, I think it's under the general options, it'll show a, a Wi-Fi button you can push. So under this multiplayer Wi-Fi button, it shows, it just says, yeah, we don't allow it. <laughs> like, it's funny that there's a button to tell you we don't have something. And it makes you think, oh, I'm going to go into these settings. Maybe they plan on doing it later. But let me show you why I love this Tetris DS game so much. So not only does it have uh, the ability to press the up button to make it instantly go down, which I think is one of my favorite things of a Tetris game, but it also has that hold category. So if you hit L1, it'll hold a tile for you as well. And a lot of the, the you know, classic, like, Game Boy version of Tetris and whatnot, they didn't have any of these features. 
And then like the Super Nintendo versions and stuff, they just bloated them with all these other things. This one I really like because it's just classic Tetris, but it has like those two major functions which are really important to me. And so you can just kind of blaze through this game and have a lot of fun. So I really like that. And then let me show you, there's also different, um, different modes you can play. And I think some of these modes are, are kind of interesting and might be a little fun. So one is the... Uh, quest mode uh, and it's that got this zelda kind of feel to it and it basically tells you specific things like this one says clear two lines at once and then you kind of keep moving so another game that works pretty well uh is geometry wars which you can see here and it runs with two different analog sticks it's the same function as the metroid prime hunters where it's using that section second one as a touch screen um so it's a little bit jaggedy not quite super smooth but you can see here i'm holding my own while playing this game which is kind of neat just to have available for you and then this one might be my own personal bias, but I really loved the Zookeeper game when it first came out on the Nintendo DS about 15 years ago. And this is a match three game, but what I really like about it is it has very fluid kind of controls to it. So as a uh, sprite is being replaced and as you're, you're kind of advancing in it, you can continue to move your cursor and, and pick other like drop three characters right and so if you chain it right and you have your controls set up and you've got the rhythm down you can just make this huge mass of points and it's just it's a lot of fun it's just kind of like a mix of rhythm and puzzle games and then the ace uh, ace attorney games the phoenix wright games these all work really well because you don't actually need to use the touch screens you just toggle between the two top and bottom screens and then you can use your buttons to select uh, the actual functions within it. So you don't actually need any touchscreen controls for that, which makes sense since these were originally Game Boy Advance games out in Japan. So these are fun kind of story games to go through. So let's talk about games that don't work. So uh, unfortunately, the, the two Legend of Zelda games, Spirit Tracks and Phantom Hourglass, uh, they require touchscreen controls because you basically use the touchscreen to move Link around. And you can see here, I spent 20 minutes getting through all these cutscenes. And, and I get to this point and I realize that, that I cannot control Link unless I'm in mouse mode and I'm moving him and then I can't see him while I'm moving him. It's just, it doesn't work. And so uh, this, this isn't an option. This is unfortunately not a game that you can play. Another game that doesn't really work is Contra 4. So this one, it doesn't work for a different reason. That's because both screens are visible at once and you can switch between the screens. And because it's a fast paced action game, it means you just don't know what's going on half the time. So right there, you can see that's the top screen and I'm supposed to figure out how to get up there or right here where I'm about to die or I die. And then I try to jump down to the bottom screen and I jump down, not realizing I'm jumping into just a bunch of gunshots, you know? And so it's just not an ideal way to play that game. Unfortunately, you could do those two screens side by side and maybe use it that way but finally let me let me leave on a better note so pokemon games work really well on this uh nintendo ds emulator here on the retroid pocket 2 and that's because uh you just alternate between the two screens and then for example when you're battling you just go and you hit the the l2 button to toggle to the top screen and then you select you know to fight or how you're going to fight and whatnot and then you have to toggle back to watch it so it's not ideal per se but it works pretty well all right, so that's it for this video. Please leave a comment if you have any questions or anything below, and uh, be sure to check out the link in the description for the full uh, breakdown of everything here. And uh, if, you, if you don't mind leaving a like and maybe subscribing if you find this helpful for you, I have a lot of more videos coming here in the future. Uh, but until then, uh, enjoy and happy gaming.